Hello, in this Ionic programming tutorial, we are going to be looking at the grid system within Ionic. If you used any sort of responsive framework like Bootstrap, Foundation, Responsive, W3, anything along those lines, you'll feel right to time. If you haven't, simply put, there's a grid system within it in Ionic and it allows you to create columns and sizes of elements that are uniform on different devices so if i had an ipad and i had a column which was 50 percent width it'll be 50 percent on the ipad be 50 percent on the iphone 50 percent on something like a nexus 5x etc etc i think you get the point so first of all let's just create a very simple column so let's put div and what we're going to do uh, you know what i am going to simply open this up in a separate text editor because the coding for web are in Xcode is terrible. So in here I'm gonna put div and put a class of row. This requires this particular class it's just not it's, it's not just me adding it. This is a, what it Require so this is one unique row. If you have another div which has a row, then that'll be a separate line, regardless of how much content there is in the previous row. Now, in here, you would have div class equals col, which is stands for column. I'm gonna put dash col, which is a column. I'm gonna copy and paste that. Let's do that five times. Let's save that. Let's build our project. So now let's run it. Okay, build has succeeded. We are launching it now. And here we go. At the moment, it's probably not the easiest to demonstrate because we don't have a background and our text isn't centered. So what we're going to actually do is do style. Uh, so we're going to put some style tags in the head. And in here, we are simply going to put dot call. We're going to put text dash Center now text dash align center. We're gonna put cut low background dash. Yes, I know I'll start doing it in Xcode again. I'll switch over in a second. Put gray. Just need to build our project. And now we should be ready to run it. Let's run this bad boy. As you can see, we've got individual, or well, the joint up, but if you were to put some margin or some padding, you would see some individual columns and they are of the same with i recommend trying it in the ipad simulator or on a real ipad if you have it on different devices so you can see that they are the same and if i were to add let's say two more they would take up less width because there would be seven of them they would be taking up an equal amount of space or to only have two they would be taking up 50 percent each next we're going to show you explicit column sizes so at the moment depending on the number of columns you have if the column width, I mean the row width, gets divided by that number of columns so they get even spacing. But now we're going to show you how to set, let's say, one column at 50% and two columns at 25%, that sort of stuff. So we're going to do another div. We're going to do save that. We'll go to Sublime. It'll just be easier if we do it in Sublime. So go down here, div, and what we're going to do is put a class of row. We're going to put div, and in the first one, we're going to put class equals 
you by default have to have coal you can't not have coal and you have coal dash how much you want your column to span so 50 will be 50 percent so that's how it works next we're going to put div class equals coal that's all we're going to be putting is coal there copy and paste that and what this will do it'll equally take up the rest of the space but you could have this has 25 percent this has 10 percent then do you have five more so you would take a what, what is that like 15 percent equally so it'll be three percent each try that try doing something along those lines so if i were to put i don't know 15 here save it build our project and now let's run it so as you can see this first column spans 50 percent of our grid then the next two are evenly spaced at 25% each. So the next property we're going to be looking at is offsetting columns. Because at the moment, all the columns have started from the left. But maybe you want a gap of 50%. That's what we're going to be achieving right now. So if we put a div, put a class of row, then put a div. So here yeah, it needs to have a class of I think you guessed it, coal. Then you put coal, the actual size of your column. I'm gonna put what should I put? I'm gonna put 40. I'm gonna now I'm going to put 50. I'm gonna put coal dash offset dash 25. So it's going to start 25% in and it's going to span 50% of the width. So it's going to be from 25 to 75% essentially. And in here we're going to put 75-25, which is equal to 50. And now we are going to put class equals call dot call. If I save that, what we'll get is a pretty darn cool result. So let's just run our project. Okie dokie. So it is indented essentially by 25%. It now spans 50%. And now the final 25% is taken up equally by this column. If we were to have two in two afterward after this, they would each take up 20, I mean 12 and a half percent. So now we're gonna look at vertically aligning columns. So now let's put a div, put a class of row. And it's all there, we're gonna put a div class of column or call for dot call. And what we're gonna do is just copy and paste this so we have three instances. Then directly after we're gonna put div class equals call. But in here, what we're gonna do, put one break line two break line three break line then four you'll see why in a moment if i were to run this now so let's just run this in our project
So we have to column, 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 one, two, three, four. And what it's done is the height of these columns is the height of the tallest column for all of these. So that's what it's done so far. What we're going to do now is copy and paste this and vary this up a bit. As you can see, let's just do it in Sublime. So it's the superior editor. Copy and paste this. As you can see, these are aligned vertically at the top. What if we want them to be aligned maybe in like a staircase effect? What we can do is add some classes. So if I were to put col dash top col dash center col dash bottom. So now let's save that. Actually, you know what? Instead of saving and running, I'm going to copy. I'm just going to show you all the different ones that I want to show you. So I'm going to show you another cool one. And this is going to be, we're going to leave this as it is. Imagine if we wanted them all to be in the center. We could just do row dash center. And if we wanted them all at the bottom, I think you can guess, we just do row. Say with me, row dash bottom. Save that. Nope, gotta get rid of that, that T. There are only, there's only two T's in bottom. Let's run our project or build our project, I should say. Now let's run it through Xcode. Okie dokie, as you can see, we've got a staircase effect. So we've got the top, center, and the bottom. We have, and the height is adjusted accordingly. We've got the center effect, and then we got the bottom effect. So the last thing I'm going to show you is a responsive grid. At the moment, if we could resize this or we view it on different size screens, they would uniformly be the same. So these three would take up 75% of the width, this will take up 50% of the screen, this will take up 25%, etc, etc. What you can do is create a responsive grid. So if I were to put a div, I don't want to do it in here, I'm going to do it in Sublime, the superior editor, we're doing div class equals row responsive dash sm and now if I were to do div class equals col dot col let me copy and paste this what we've done is created a row where if the screen size is below is smaller than a landscape phone, horizontal phone basically, what it will do is put each one of these columns on an individual line essentially. So let's build our project and show you what we mean. This is a great way of making it look good on a smaller screen because what you sometimes gain websites and apps less so but especially with websites when you start resizing it, when you resize it to the point of like a website, it's still resizing in the normal way so things are still taking off 50 percent instead of going on top of each other so as you can see this is on top of each other now if i were to go to hardware rotate left is our app not okay our app does not support landscape so let's just run it and make sure it supports landscape Yep, that's no good. So what we're gonna do is go to Sublime. We're gonna put this one at the top, like so. Save that. We're gonna put a break line. Build our project. And now in Xcode or in a moment, we will run our project. So let's just run this bad boy in the simulator. These are switch back when they did, didn't they?
So let's just do landscape left, right, upside down, portrait. So as you can see, they are evenly spaced out now because our screen is not smaller than a landscape phone because we're at a landscape phone. So let's just honestly get rid of this because we don't want this anymore. Let's just run it for one more last time so you can see what it looked like while it was just in regular portrait mode. Let's run it. <laughs> And as you can see, they are on top of each other because we are smaller than a landscape phone now. So that is it for grid for the grid system. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link in the description to that. Plus, there will be another link to the source code from every video in this series. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.